no tea timers. So um, today is an angel water tea kind of day. Uh, Diana M said she ordered some and that she loves it. So that's really nice. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. I, I sometimes, like, I don't say the brands of uh, the teas because I don't want you guys to feel like I'm pitching you different types of teas, but I drink what I drink, and then sometimes I'll try something new. But um, she sneakily found out who did it anyway. It is a lovely tea, isn't it? It's just really soothing. Sometimes you just feel like something that's decaf and soothing, and I also like all the pretty little flowers and stuff that they have in it, so it looks pretty as well. That Actually, that tea, I discovered that tea Remember when I told you I was going to go meet Jane Ann Krentz for the first time and I had bought, I was trying to find like a tea that would go with the tea, the tea mugs that I bought her that I never gave her because I thought it was silly and I just chickened out. But that's how I found that tea. I, I went to this tea place and I was looking at all the different teas and I was smelling them and um, that one looks so pretty, but also she was kind of like an angel because she blurred my book when, when it first came and she, and that was so kind of her. So, um, I bought that, I, I bought a big tin of that tea for her too that I didn't give to her. <laughs> oh yeah, so it's weird. It's like you think, you know, I've done a lot in my life that I'd be super confident, but I'm really shy. <laughs> nice. Okay, I'll get to some, some questions here. Okay, um, Patricia, oh, but I put my, <laughs> okay, yes, these are going on. <laughs> okay, Patricia Gallant, to get a signed book plate, do we have to pay for that or do we order, have to order a book as well? Um, if I don't win Solace Island off of Writer Space this month, I'll most likely be ordering the book. So the thing is, is that, yes, so for the bookstores, in order for them to, you know, carry the book plates, they, it's so that they can sell the books. So that if you want one of the signed book plates and bookmarks, that comes with the book, because otherwise, then they need to, you know, we're trying to support the independent bookstores, which is why I came up with the idea. Well, also, because you guys asked for side books. So you kind of came up with the idea. And I thought, what a good way to help support some of the independent bookstores. And if there's another independent bookstore that likes watching these tea times and would like to have the signed book plates and bookmarks as well, you can just um, let me know because I'm happy to do it to as many as possible. I just didn't, and then I can put your link under my, um, whatever this is called, the video thing. Well, I can, I see. I can put my link. Yeah, my husband can put my link because I have no idea. But it, so if there are other bookstores, don't I? I just thought I didn't want to overwhelm everybody with a zillion bookstore choices. But there might be one in your area that would like to have it. Just let me know. But um, that's where I put one from the U.S., one from Canada, and one for U.K. Europe. So yeah, you'd have to get the book from them in order to get the signed book plate. And I was thinking maybe, but uh, I, it, you know, because I'm in quarantine, so I can't go out and get new pictures. Because <laughs> I thought maybe I could do like. For the next book do a, a, a different one so that there would be a different kind of like book plate and bookmark that would go with that one but it might be might be starting to get a little complicated and especially i mean especially because i'm in quarantine and i'm not seeing anybody so well, but anyway it's something to think about <clears throat> i'm thinking so yes you do have to what so you're wondering like why is meg putting these things on now that's because i thought instead of copying down Oh, I just poked myself in the face. <laughs> I just poked myself really hard in the eye. Luckily, I shut my eye. Um, instead of writing it down, because I'm kind of a slow writer and sloppy, and you know how I'm always saying, oh, I, I can't read my writing, I would print it out. So that's that's what um, I'm doing, except for I printed it out too small, <laughs> so I can't read the questions. So I was very clever, but um, <clears throat> maybe not so clever. Here we go. Okay, so... Uh, hi Meg, this is uh, Courtney Tantum. Love your work and videos. I usually watch your videos when I need to be focused, which sounds strange, but it works. Forgive me if my memory is not so strong. I don't know if this question has been answered. My question, do you think having to stay home impacted you in a good way, like learning more about yourself and writing, or is it a fallback as a writer? Much love. 
Okay, so when I first, when we first got um, into quarantine, I was freaking out. So it was very hard. I'd been writing, galloping along with my writing and then this all happened and I was, it was hard to focus. So it, I would, I would do my days. I would sit down, but my pages, it was much more difficult to get because the outside, what was going on and the fear of everything kept bombarding and banging its way in. And then a couple of months in something shifted and, and I was able to focus so much better. And I was so grateful to have my imaginary worlds that I'm working on, like uh, the runaway heiress. And, and then now to have this one to dive into so that I could forget about all the stuff that was going on and my worry for my family and friends and loved ones and, and, and for the people, you know, all of you out there. So I have a frog in my throat. I don't know if you can tell, <clears throat> it sounds a little, <laughs> but yeah. So then all of a sudden I was able to focus really well. And I think that maybe helped, um, the runaway heiress in terms of the, the writing. I, I had gotten to a certain point, but then all of a sudden it, it gave me a, some place to just go to and get wrapped up in that story. So then it helped, but it wasn't all the time. So I'm like, wee hoo, I'm just gonna be like the writing queen. But then something would happen with family, like with Dawn or with other members of my family or beloved friends where they would get sick and then the worry would um, take over or uh, things would arise because a lot of people are spending this time thinking about things that you know, there's more time for self contemplation and more time to uh, visit things that sometimes when we keep so busy, we don't. And so I think it has been a time of loss, but also of extreme personal growth because you can't distract yourself from facing some particularly sometimes uncomfortable truths uh, and sometimes revelations about how what's really important or how you walk in the world. So I think that this pandemic has been a mix, a mix of like incredible challenge and even more so for, you know, the people who have had to be in the front lines all across the board, front lines, the frontline workers, the people working in the hospitals all across the board. But I have to say out of this has come also some relationships have like bonded and gotten deeper and more strong. Uh, like it's, it's, uh, cause all the other stuff, all that little stuff has just fallen away and, and the same with the writing. So then, you know, there, there'll be a point where something will happen in the family and then I'm trying to do my pages and I'm sitting down and putting my butt in the chair, but they're creaking out like maybe a page and a half after four hours of writing, you know, and then there's days like, so right now, then now it's going a bit like this again, because on the new book, it's like all these things are coming back and coming together and or trying to come together like, oh my gosh, going over here and it's going in different directions. The book I'm working on now, the manuscript I'm working on now, but it's kind of exciting. But then I just got my last set of uh, edits for the last, for the runaway heiress, the last bit so then now I have to stop and, and do that. But by a couple more days, I'll have that done. Off it goes. And then that's it. Then the book, the book comes out. So it's, um, it's a mix. It's a mix. <laughs> As you all know, it's a mix. I'm sure that some of you, even the ones of you in the real, real, um, hard, hard situations where you're, you're dealing like working in a hospital and stuff. Cause I have a lot of people who, who work it in there. Um, I bet that you found going through this and all the difficulty that you know some of your the people you work with in a much deeper level than you did before this. You knew them before, but this has has just cut away all the the bullshit and just dropped it down to a real fundamental level that I think will bond people in it through the rest of their lives. That's what I think, but I could be wrong. Okay, let me see, get my little glasses on again. Good thing I have them. Oh, let me take a sip of tea too while I'm doing it. 
Okay. I don't know what this is. Let me see what this is. Um, the Toscana Man. Uh, Meg, that was a very sweet story about your beloved dog, Sarah. Dogs really do touch your life in a, such a special way. I have an 11 year old Havanese named Billy. It's just her and me now, so we're joined at the hip. Regardless, you're not non de plume. At least these days, a woman can make it when she wants. I like your story about how you got yours and not be forced to write under a man's name as they did years ago. That was a bunch of misogynistic crap. <laughs> That's true. It was. People had to write under men's names or they wouldn't get published many times. So, or they would just do their initials and then do their names. Uh, Val Cobb. The story of Sarah really made me tear up a bit. I had a Jack Russell Terrier who lived to be 17 years old. His name was Max. I had him since he was six or seven. He was a grouchy boy in his old age, but he was always smart and really funny. Uh, I know it's funny how, not funny, but how our old beloved dogs just stick with us. And um, it's like sometimes you expect them to come, come in the room, you know, or you see a dog that resembles them and, and you're like, oh, you know, you think for a second it's them, a younger them coming back or they'll come in your dreams, but boy, they sure do make your life a whole lot better. Let's see. Oh, okay, so Roy Young, the shoe story, remember the one I told you about the big chill and <laughs> going to the reunion? Okay, so this is about that. The shoe story is funny as hell. It's somehow comforting to know that little things can happen to famous people too. By the way, if it happens to you again and you have a bad stain like that, use saddle soap. You find it in the shoe polish aisle. Works wonders on stains brought on by dye. So that's why I read that one. I didn't know that. I would, I'd be very happy to know it. So any of you who have dyed your feet black or purple or blue or brown by the shoe dye or, you know, sometimes those um, the Ugg boots, which have the colored dye, I've got once black Ugg boots. And again, my feet got dyed, dyed black. It's really good to know. So that's, thank you for the helpful tint, the helpful hint, uh, Roy. Actually, you know, I have another shoe story too, since we're going into a word story. It's not that big of a story, but I went to the, um, to the Oscars. Oh, somebody had asked me about Oscars, what it was like. Oh, shoot. Okay, well, you know who you are. Somebody wanted to know what it was like behind the scenes at the Oscars. Um, so it's different in different ways, but this particular one, it, I'll tie it onto the shoe store. I guess I could tell the Oscars some other time, but this particular one, I was wearing this dress and I found this dress because um, John had to go to the Oscars all the time. And the Oscar dresses are black tie dresses. I don't know. Um, they are so expensive. Oh my gosh, like so expensive. And, and sure, you can spend like all that money on something or not, but it just seems like such a, a waste of money. Not a waste of money, because you can feel very, very beautiful. But but be, if you aren't an actress where the designers are offering you all their 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 beautiful designs, you know, it's a lot of money. A, a, a fancy, fancy, like couture, is that how you pronounce it? Dress can be the price of a car. Like seriously, I'm not kidding, the price of a car. And I didn't, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> so, but I was driving back from, uh, what was it? Some, some, maybe Disneyland or something. There was a, I noticed that they had a outlet store that had like design stuff. So I was like, oh my gosh. So then I went back after I got the kids home and they had black tie things from a runway. And there was this a couple like really gorgeous, gorgeous things that had been off some designer's runway. The labels were cut out so you wouldn't know who, who it was, but there was this beautiful one that was all beaded and it was kind of a, had like all these different, and it was gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous dress. Like so pretty, I, I don't have any pictures of it, but it was so, so pretty. And so I wore that when I had to go to, you know, um, to the Oscars because, he was running the studio and there was lots of, you know, fancy people and I didn't want to look bad, but I just thought, well, this is a, the most beautiful dress I've done and I haven't paid thousands and thousands of dollars for it. 
it was like $350, which is still a lot of money for a dress that you're only going to wear a couple of times. But I donated it afterwards. So that's what I would do so that then some kid can be like, oh, I can't go to my grad because I can't afford it. Or somebody else wants to go and then they can find it. So I donated it to those the grad school things. <clears throat> so, but I was wearing it. And it was so beautiful. And I remember um, a bunch of women came up like, oh my goodness, I love your dress. Where did you get your dress? And I said, oh, it's the best place ever. It's an outlet store and it's just down the thing and you could get things and it was $350. And I thought that they would be so excited. I, can't, I don't remember who the, who, who the women were, but they kind of recoiled in shock. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. Oh, what are people going to think of us that we liked a $350 dress, you know? Oh, oh yes. They made an excuse and left really. I thought everybody would be like, oh my gosh, give me the name. I'm going to go down there because going to these Oscars, it, it's so expensive. And, 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 and that's still a lot of money, but it's, you can do it, right? So anyway, but that's one of the things. But the other thing that happened at that particular one is that I did get some shoes. I had some shoes that I had to buy that were almost the price of the dress, but you have to have your shoes match your dress, right? And I think I borrowed a purse from Jen, but the shoes were all sparkly, but they're heels, of course. And so you're sitting there for a very long time. So whenever I sit down, as you guys know, I slip off my heels. So I slipped off my heels and that was the year that, um, oh, what was that? Goodwill hunting was nominated and they were in, I think they were in the aisle with us or the aisle behind us or something like that. Um, and so they, there was a lot of winning. There were people who worked in that movie all around us cause it was their movie. So they would, they, everybody would, when they'd somebody from that movie would get up, we'd all jump up and clap and nobody could see my feet cause they're hidden behind the things. Right. So I'm all happy barefoot in there clapping and this and that, and you know, shaking hands and they're leaping out and shaking hands with us cause they're so happy. And then at the end of the evening, it's like, oh, thank goodness we can go to the governor's ball now. And I'm feeling around with my feet for my shoes and they, I've got one, but the other one, I can't find it. It's not there. I'm like, oh no, oh no. Feeling around more and more with my feet and going like this. And John's like, come on, come on, mate. It's time to go. And I'm like, oh, just a minute. I can't find it. And so then I stand up and we let everybody else out of our aisle out. And then I'm going down on the floor and he goes, what's going on? And I said, I lost my shoe. I lost my shoe. So everybody's all fancy in their black ties. So we're looking for the shoes down underneath. Guess where I found it? four aisles in front of us, four aisles in front of us. It had been like there and then got moved down and moved down as everybody kept standing up and kept on getting moved down. Thank goodness I found it. I would have had to do like go to the governor's ball going clump, clump, clump. Well, actually I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have. I mean, that seems funny. Like if you just wear one shoe off and one shoe on, but I'd probably just taken the others off and, you know, hope nobody noticed that I was barefoot. <laughs> <laughs> walking around, you know, kind of changes the structure of the gown and the gown would be pulled around my feet because you have those extra several inches for the thing. So anyway, um, happy tea time. Bye.